Now, when it comes to barbershop fragrances, the term is kind of nebulous in the sense that some people associate it with lavender fragrances, some people associate it with very herbal and aromatic fragrances. Some people even use the term interchangeably with powdery fragrances. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna be going over a fragrance that is kind of a mix of all three of those things. This is called Mr. Barber by the Dua brand. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new original creation, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I tell you all about Mr. Barber by the Dua brand and I go over the notes, what it smells like on my skin, how it evolved on my skin, any comparisons to popular designer or niche fragrances, so on and so forth. I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you learned something from today's episode. It would really mean a lot to me. So, of course, Dua is a brand that does recreate a lot of popular niche and designer fragrances, but over the past couple of years, they've really embarked on this journey of creating original fragrances. And that's exactly what this one is. Now, of course, with a name like Mr. Barber, you would get the impression that this is a barbershop type of a fragrance, and that's exactly what it is. So this fragrance is a little bit powdery. There's this clean, billowy musk note in the dry down. There is is lavender in here but there's some other clean floral ingredients like violet there's also a lang lang not too strong of a presence a little bit of amber not sweet at all but then you also have a bit of citrus in the opening namely bergamot and yuzu you do have this green foliage accord which is really interesting and I was able to make just one or two comparisons to popular designer fragrances nevertheless I do think the quality is here the long lastingness is here and there's something quite original about it as well I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's take a quick look at the presentation. So as I mentioned before, this one has a nice balance or a nice mix of lavender, herbal notes, but also powdery facets. Now the first thing that I got personally, and I think it's because it's a note that makes itself immediately noticeable, is the note of mint. I actually got a lot of mint from this fragrance. It opens up very bright and herbal and minty, and it definitely succeeds in opening up your nasal passages. That's precisely the effect that mint has had in a number of fragrances whenever I've experienced them. And I love mint. It's very bright and refreshing. Now the mint is combined with the lavender for this young, modern, and youthful, urbane, masculine quality that I really, really enjoy. The violet is also on the clean side of things. I do get facets of Lum Libra by Yves Saint Laurent, which is discontinued now, unfortunately. Some of the darker violets on the market are perhaps something like a Dior Fahrenheit. That's not what you're gonna get from this. It's definitely a clean, smooth, floral, pure type of a violet that you're gonna get, but it's also combined with that lavender quite nicely. Now the lavender is also quite strong, but it's only secondary to the mint. Now the mint eventually mellows out. The lavender kind of retains its tenacity, right? So the lavender is not as strong as the mint in the opening, but after about 20, 30 minutes, the lavender actually does end up getting stronger than the mint because it feels like that herbal minty mentholated presence of it kind of dies out. You are going to get that violet kind of running consistently throughout the heart of this fragrance. The amber is pretty much non-existent. The Lang Lang is there and you can tell that it's giving a little bit of a personality to the heart, but again, it doesn't convey the sort of yellow floral vibe that it does in some other fragrances along with Freesia and perhaps even Narcissus and some of these other heady floral ingredients. That's not what's happening in here. You do get mostly violet, but more so lavender, which I think is really nice. Now, I spoke about getting all of these other notes in the opening. Where's the citrus? <laughs> now, in terms of yuzu, perhaps I am getting something kind of fresh, but it's on the more nondescript side of things. So without a note breakdown, I wouldn't be able to tell you, oh yeah, that's yuzu, or oh yeah, that's grapefruit. Am I getting bergamot? Uh, sure, perhaps. I, I do get this sort of 
bright, fresh, citrusy quality in the opening. I would imagine the bergamot is probably a little bit stronger than the yuzu. I'm not getting a whole lot of yuzu per se. And of course, when you think of yuzu as a note, I personally worked on one by Navitus Parfum that contains yuzu in it. It's called Away. And then there's also Lodice Porom by Ise Miyake. That has a noticeable yuzu ingredient, and actually that's kind of like the main reputation of that fragrance, right? It's a yuzu dominant fragrance with some white florals, a little bit of lily and whatnot. I don't get that from this fragrance. As a matter of fact, this fragrance smells like a really nicely done, slightly powdery lavender fragrance combined with a little bit of that lum slash lum libra DNA. So you do get a little bit of lum, you do get that bright sort of, you know, gentlemanly, youthful, like basically a versatile aroma, but you also do get that lum libra clean on the violet floral side of things. And it's actually really, really nice. When I was wearing this, a couple of times that I did wear it, I almost did kind of fake myself out into thinking I was wearing Lum by Yves Saint Laurent. It actually conjured up some really interesting memories from times when I used to work at a different job and I used to wear that fragrance like on a daily basis practically. But this fragrance does have the lavender and that slight powdery touch. I really, really like this one. I love that they didn't go in an overly powdery direction, something like uh, Invasion Barbare by Parfum MDCI or a 1725 Casanova by Histoire de Parfum. They did not go in that direction, which I think could have been a bit of an easy way out. It might have been a bit of a cop out to say, you know what, we're gonna create a barbershop fragrance. We're gonna call it Mr. Barber and let's make it 80% similar to At the Barbershop or one of these other, you know, explicitly barbershop heavy fragrances or what one would expect a barbershop scent to smell like. I'm glad that they actually lightened it up. They added a nice bit of musk and citrus and lavender and green notes. And there's also patchouli in the dry down. Certainly the patchouli is secondary to the musk. Like I said, the amber is almost not even there, right? Like I'm not getting any anything sweet or balsamic from this fragrance, but the longevity is there. And I also like that the liquid inside is a bit on the green side of things. So even that in and of itself kind of conveys like this barbershop vibe. It's quite apropos, but nevertheless, awesome fragrance, very fresh, well-groomed personality, very um, come and go, very casual, very versatile. I'm loving it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, like I said, this did not have a cop-out sort of a resemblance to any other barbershop fragrance. So I really appreciate that. The originality is there, which is again, very strongly appreciated. Perhaps the only comparisons that I was able to make with some confidence are Lum by Yves Saint Laurent and Lum Libre by Yves Saint Laurent, which is discontinued. Longevity. 10 plus hours, projection was amazing for the first hour and a half of application, radiated beyond an arm's length. It became an elbows length scent right around hour six, a skin scent right around hours nine or 10. Versatility, it is masculine leaning. I can see this one being worn in any season, so any time of the year, very appropriate for that. I can see this being worn casually and formally, no rough edges mass appealing, incredibly versatile, and it smells very well groomed. I actually look forward to wearing this after I get my hair cut tomorrow. So I'm gonna time it properly so that as soon as I get home after a shower, I'm gonna put this on and it's definitely gonna fit that bill quite nicely. And I can see this one catering to anybody of any age, to be honest with you. It's not overly sweet. It's not sweet at all, actually, but it doesn't have that sweetness is what I'm trying to say that would cater to a much younger demographic. So anybody of any age can enjoy this one. The presentation, it does have one of the, I think it's a metal plaque label here on the front. It's not a sticker, so I can say that much, right? I mean, it is, there's an adhesive keeping it to the front, but it's not one of those wraparound stickers that they usually utilize. That's what I'm trying to say before anybody nitpicks. So my final verdict on this fragrance is, I think it's a wonderful fragrance. I like that they took the more unconventional route when it comes to barbershop scents. I think it has a lot of notes that are kind of evocative of that genre. And I think they executed it in a way that all aspects of the presentation and the delivery were kept in mind. Everything from the label to the color of the liquid to the individual notes that are present within the note breakdown. Fantastic job. Love this one. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell. Give this video a thumbs up. 
I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.